Buenos días. Buenos días. Sí, está muy temprano para mí también. Pero ahora voy a hablar en inglés porque mi español no es tan bueno. Perfecto. So, to start, uh, I would like to have a poll with you, also helpful right in the morning to wake up. So, who of you here is still using Java 4 or an older version? No one? That's a good start, okay. Java 5, anyone? No? Six? Okay, good. Seven? A few? Eight? Okay, that's probably the majority. Nine? Okay, one. Ten? Eleven? Oh, there's a lot. Twelve? No one. Okay, so now let's go back a bit in time, back to Java 1.0. That's quite a long time, actually, yes. So that was in 1996, 23 years ago. And some of you might not even have been born at the time. So let's travel back in time and remember what this time was actually like. So back in the time, we would have had computers like this one. So big, chunky monitors. Um, here it is, right? Sexy, sexy. And a typical computer would have, let's say, a Pentium with 133 megahertz, no giga there, and 8 to 32 megabytes of RAM. So in your pockets, you would have even much faster computers today. And that's the time when Java was first, uh, the first version was released, right? And obviously, this has some influence on Java even today. Java was optimized for long-running processes. At the time, a typical server would also consist of one CPU and one core, right? So a Java application would typically just run one Java application on one server. And so it could just pick any kind of memory it would need, happy, happy. And like it was also way before Agile or Fragile. So um, in this time, we would develop an application, we would plan, you know, waterfall model. We would plan over months, develop over months. There was no testing also. And once finally the application was ready, we would be so happy that it was running on production probably over weeks or months, sometimes maybe even over years, which is why it wouldn't matter how long it would take for the JVM to start up, right? As long as afterwards it's like super, super fast. And yes, it was. But today, with Java in the cloud, things are a bit different, right? In the cloud, this is a much more dynamic environment today. And there, it can appear that Java is unfortunately too big and too fat and too slow. And this is I try to symbolize here with Java Duke not really fitting into the container. So this is why many companies already started to move away from Java and towards Go or Node. But we at Red Hat, we really love Java, and we have many Java applications and a lot of experience with Java. So we were looking for ways of how we could improve that for Java. Because, you know, you probably also have heard this so many times, Java is dead. Well, Java is not dead at all, right? It will probably live on forever. So now I want to introduce you to Quarkus, supersonic Java. Let's see what this brings us. OK. So here, we have three different applications. First of all, we have Quarkus running on GraalVM. So that will be um, running as a native executable. And second, we have Quarkus running on OpenJDK, the, the yellow one, um, running on the hotspot VM. And then we, have, we compare that to a traditional cloud native stack. So what is a tr the traditional cloud native stack? Well, the pens could be anything like, for example, an application running on Tomcat or in Wildfly or in JBoss or even on Spring Boot, right? So any kind of application um, like this, OK? So now let's compare this. First of all, the memory. And when I say memory, I mean the memory RSS, because in the cloud, that's really what truly matters, because in the cloud, we pay for the memory. And memory RSS means the entire memory that the process is using, right? Not just the heap, but the entire memory. So this is what really, really matters. And we see that for a typical application, traditionally, we would use as much as 140 megabytes, right? 
And now if you think of the cloud and you think of like a multi-cluster environment, that can just be too much, right? Because if you want to have a, a huge cluster of 100 nodes, for example, that really scales up quickly. And as I said, this is why many companies have moved away and towards Go or Node. But with Quarkus, we can have like very similar results. For example, Quarkus running as a native executable, uh, we go as low as 13 megabytes of RAM RSS. Okay, so that is about 10 times, uh, so 10 times less the size of the traditional app. And this really now gets interesting. Now you could ask, what about the speed? Because actually, a native executable is usually could be slower, right? Because the JVM, it takes a while to start up, but when it, once it has started, it will run super, super fast. But the thing is here, what we really are interested in is the request per memory that we pay for, right? And with that, even assuming that our native executable potentially would be running 20, 30, even 40% slower, with that memory, we can have 10 times the uh, uh, containers. And this is why this will be outperforming a traditional cloud native stack multiple times, OK? But it depends. And this is why we support both. It depends on if you want to and can use a native executable, right? Because it comes with some restrictions. And the question is, are you ready for that or not? I think in the average case, you should be. But if not, we also support Quarkus running on OpenJDK. Obviously, here the numbers are a bit different, but still, like with 74 megabytes, it's about half the size, right? And here we're just looking at a REST application. So, well, we can also look at REST and CRUD, for example, JPA, right? So here the numbers are quite similar. And now let's also look at the boot and first response time. And there again, I want to clarify, like, what is that actually? The thing is, when we have our application, for example, a WAR or a JAR, and we deploy that um, to our server, it takes a while to start up. And after a while, your framework would tell you, hey, I've started up. But actually, that is not entirely true, because only when the first request comes in, now our JVM starts to optimize all of this and to really, this really gets loaded, and this will, the first request will usually be slower, right, for a JVM-based application. So here we see first response time with Quarkus is as low as 14 milliseconds. And in the coding demo that I show you uh, just in a few seconds, um, we will see we have even nicer numbers there. So that is really, I think, mind-blowing, such numbers we have never seen in Java. And still, like, if you look at Quarkus running on OpenJDK, we have like 75 milliseconds. That's pretty an awesome value, I think. And if we compare that now here with our traditional application, we have 4.3 seconds. So that is much, much, much uh, uh, slower. Same again for REST and CRUD. So now the question remains, like, well, how is this actually working? So how this works is, well, first of all, we start quite traditional, just building the class files. Sorry. And now the Quarkus plugin comes into play. And this exists as a Maven plugin, if you like Maven. If you prefer Gradle, we also have the Gradle plugin. So whatever you like, you can use that. Now, what does this plugin do? We create an optimized jar. And this optimized jar, what this is, well, we at Red Hat, we have lots of experience, obviously, with servers. And what the server does is you take your jar, or war, and it loads that. And it part, there is like, for example, XML files, and there is annotations. So this all has to be parsed. And this is two things. First of all, obviously, um, parsing this will take some time. Processing this will take some time. But also, you will need some classes to make this actually happen. And these classes will be loaded in memory. They will be just used once at the start of your application. And then, unfortunately, they will sit in your memory forever. right? So this is just a waste. So we're doing the whole process up front instead. And so we create something like a recording or a caching file, which is just the bytecode, the end result. And this makes it extremely fast and also extremely small. Right? So this is like the trick. But this is only step one. Um, so here we, we are on a hotspot VM. Now it depends. Like, 
If you find that, you're done. But you can also run this on GrawVM. This will create a native executable. And now, um, well, GrawVM is also not a big secret, right? You can also use GrawVM on your own. You can do all of this on your own. But this can be a quite tedious process because you have to like, write a lot of config files. You have to define a lot. And all of this is done for you without any pain with a Quarkus plugin, right? So this makes this process super, super simple and fun. OK. So now, this was a lot about how this is working in production. Nice. But I guess most of you are probably developers. And well, I'm also a developer. And for us developers, the fun is, right, like the daily stuff that we do. Like, this should be also fast and fun. And there, we also took time to really make this also an awesome experience. The one thing that I like most of Quarkus is the Quarkus developer mode. But I will just not explain this. I'll just show this live here. So I think that gives a better idea. And <clears throat> now one last thing because before we actually get started. Documentation. I mean, I know documentation is boring. But in this case, I think actually it's not. It's quite a nice documentation. Uh, I mean, I use that also myself. It's really simple to get started. Um, so do me one favor after my talk here, if you have time. Um, you can sit even at the beach and uh, open this URL and try this out. Because everything that I show you today, you can also do on your own. Just go to this website. There are super simple examples that you can do. And uh, yeah, I promise you it will be fun. OK, so now it's time to do some live coding. So let me switch. Yeah, played around already. So the first thing that I want to show you is I want to show you how we can create a native executable and how we can run that, right? So for this, to speed up, because we don't have that much time, I have already uh, created our first startup project. But we'll do the same thing again just afterwards, so you will see all the steps that are necessary. OK. So let's get started. Maven package. So I use here Maven. But as I said, you can also use Gradle if you prefer that. So now, I directly get started with the native mode. That's a profile. OK. So now, this will create our native executable. This is actually the longest thing that we will ever see, because this is approximately taking us a bit over a minute, because now we have to create this uh, native executable. And because this takes a while, but keep in mind, you know, in a typical working uh, uh, situation, we would only do this at the very, very end. Now we're just switching the order to show you this up front. And while this is uh, running, I will now create a second project, because uh, I, I also want to show you the coding side. So for this, let's open a second tab while this is running. So now I start. So this is how you would typically start now. Maven IO, Quark, oops, it's really early in the morning. Maven IO Quarkus, Quarkus Maven plugin, uh, create. OK. So now uh, this is really helping us to start a project. I mean, you don't have to use this. This is just a nice way to get started. So I pick here as the group ID and package, com red hat developers. And artifact ID, let's pick J on the beach main, because this will be our main application. OK, uh, that's fine. Rest resource, no, we'll do this ourselves. OK, and now we're done. In the meantime, let's see, still building, OK. So we can open this project now. Or let's have a look. Uh, first of all, I have to go there. J on the beach main, OK, fine. So 
Okay, so now let's open the project. Opening. And while this opens, hopefully we're done. Yes, so now we're done. So now we can continue with this one here. So now, let's see what we have. Uh, sorry. So here we have our native executable. I don't know who here has actually played with Quarkus or has ever seen a native executable. Okay, I see a few. So now let's start this. And how do we actually start a native executable? Just dot slash j on the beach runner. And it says cannot execute binary file. Why is that? Well, the thing is, what I want you to remember, a native executable file means it's machine code, right? So there is no Java now anymore. So that means, I mean, here I'm running on a Mac, and I have just created this for a Docker file because we want to create a, a Linux Docker image. And that means we have to run this within Docker, right? So this is not going to work. OK, so what do we do instead? We go back. And the cool thing here is also that Docker files are automatically provided for you. And now we can build this. So Docker build, file. And now we have two files, one native and one uh, uh, normal file for the JVM. As I said, there are two modes. So I'll pick here the native one. Let's call this Quarkus demo. OK. Oh, yeah, the dot. I usually tend to forget that. OK, so this is done. So now let's actually run this also. And let's see what happens. Oh, it's so early. So docker run. And now we say OK. So. And did you notice this started? This was so fast, five milliseconds. Look here. And now, let's see, it's on port 8080. So let's see if, I, if it's actually true what I'm saying. So let's navigate there. No, I don't know why this is not. Do I have a typo? Localhost 8080. Oh, no, something. I don't know what happened. But here we are. OK, so let's do this maybe again. We stopped it. We started. Now it started even in four milliseconds, so I promised you this can even be faster. I mean, of course, this is a very simplified application at the moment. We'll make this more complex over time. So let's reload this. Something is wrong with my browser. OK, there we are again. So now I want to build my second application, as I said. And I want to connect later on to this native uh, application, so that we see the non-native application and the native application, they can actually communicate together and work together. And so we also see some coding fun. OK, so in the meantime, we have now the main project that I built before, right? So also let's look at this. So let's have a uh, look at the, at the POM. So here we see we have a classical bomb, so we don't need to define all the versions. Here we have rest easy. That means we have JXRS and a subset of CDI. At the moment here, we're using JUnit 5. You could also use JUnit 4, whatever you like. This is just rest assured, not, not really related to Quarkus for testing. 
And this is the native executable that I just used before, right? And the Quarkus Maven plugin. And we have also configured for integration testing. Um, this can really also help you with testing. But we will not have the time today to show, to look at the testing aspect. OK. So now let's actually start and do some coding. So you see this is empty. Oh, it's not entirely empty because we have already the Docker file. This is what I just used before, right? So this is the two Docker files. Here the one for the JVM, and here the native one. So here we use Fedora Minimal, OK? And now the Java folder is empty. So let's create our first Java file, but before I have to drink. OK. So let's close off all of this. New Java class, com, Red Hat, developers, and let's call this developer resource. Developer resource, the light is a bit heavy. Developer resource, OK. So now let's give this a pass. Let's make this, oops, developers. OK. Now let's add our first method. And I will just use get. You know, it's not production ready code, it's just some hacking. So don't misunderstand me. Public string hello, let's call this hello world. So we make this a get. And I also want to pass here. Hello. And uh, producers. Media type. Where is it? Here. Text plane. OK. And now let's just return some string. Return hello world. OK. So now I guess this looks fine. Let's just try it. So what do we have to do? Well, this is quite simple. No magics involved so far. So we just say maven package. OK, and we're done. So let's now also start this. My notebook today is still sleeping. <laughs> so while this is actually or while this is actually starting, maybe we do some more coding. Oh, finally it started. That's interesting. So uh, let's go there. Oh. Maybe the reason, let me check. Now we could have a port conflict because I, I think I have let them run both. Let me see, is this still running? Yes, it is, so we should stop this. OK. So hopefully it's working. Developers. Hello. Yes, hello world. So now, seems like I forgot an exclamation mark, right? So what do we have to do to add an exclamation mark? Well, we have to, to stop the server, right? We have to change our code. We have to compile the code again. We have to start the server again. Huh. Lots of time for Twitter, hooray, <laughs> right? Especially if we have like long-running integration tests. Hmm. And there must be a better way. And yes, there is. And that's the Quarkus developer mode. And this is what I will show you uh, uh, in a second. But before, to make this even more exciting, I want to add some more dependencies so we can see some more features of here, right? OK, so this is why we will stop this for now.
And now, let's, oh, we could actually do this in here. So what we do now is we say maven walk is colon list extensions. Because we provide a number of extensions. And let me show them to you. And this list is continuously growing. So when I was doing this the first time, this list was much, much smaller. But more and more projects start to develop uh, extensions for Quarkus because this is really making Java so awesome. So let's have a look. What do we have here? One thing that I really like is Hibernate with Panache. So this is a new um, JPA implementation that we did a really nice and programmatic way to use uh, um, JPA. And this I want to show you today. This topic is actually so big, I could have an own talk on only this. Well, we don't have the time, so we will only slightly touch the subject. Um, so this is the artifact ID. The group ID will be automatically added, because it's just IO Quarkus. So let me copy this. So now I say. and. This is just one way of doing it. Obviously, if you know what you have to do, you can also copy and paste that directly into your POM. But I think this is a nice way of, of using this because you get an idea what all the extensions there are. So we say maven quarkus colon add extension. Often I have a typo here. Minus the extensions. And now we put this here, comma, and we will add some more stuff. So we stopped here. Now, I mean, I also want to have a real CRUD application, so I will add here this MariaDB driver. I already have my MySQL database running in the background, and they're compatible. So no, no, no space, please. Uh, seems like a copy to space. OK. This might be safer. So, MariaDB, what else? So let me see. Rest easy with JSON B. Yes, this one, please. OK. What else? Small Rai here, our microprofile implementation with fault tolerance. We can play with that also. Uh, OK. More. I also want a REST client so we can connect to the native application later on. OK, so now I hope I'm done. OK, so you now see one, two, three, four, five extensions we have added. So let's look how this looks in the POM. And here we already have the IDE already. In Recognize that. So let's see. So now we have, as we would have expected, fault tolerance, REST easy JSON B, the REST client, and Hibernate Panache, and the MariaDB driver. OK. So now we also need um, some configuration for to connect against the database. And because I don't know this inside out, and it's early, let's Retrieve this here. OK. This, by the way, is VS Code. Super fast, nice, slim editor also. OK. So now I'm also switching on port 8081, so we will not get the conflict that we probably had before. OK. And now the fun actually starts, because I will now switch to the Quarkus developer mode. So we can do what I promised you before of changing that string like on the fly. OK. So for this, I say maven compile quarkus colon dev. OK. So now it started up. So now let's see if it's still running. No, it's, oh, yeah. Sorry, port. Localhost 8081. 
something is wrong. Class cast exception. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Developer resource. Hello world. Looks good. Okay, so this worked, so let's try it again. So, uh, Maven compile, quark is colon def. So, something is still not working. So maybe let's, let's check this later. Now let's add some more features first. Okay, so first of all, I will add a new class because I want to show you uh, Panache. So I will make a new class. Um, yeah, we already in a package. Developer, developer. Okay, so let's make this an entity, a Panache entity. Okay, extends Panache entity. Now, this is a very new approach. Um, so if you, if you like, you can use that, but if you prefer the old approach, we can also support the Panache repository, or if you want or you have to still use an entity manager, you can also do that, right? But let me show you the Panache entity now. Okay, so the cool thing here is we directly inherit here the ID, and what we also inherit is lots of methods here from the Panache entity base class, so we directly get persist, delete, and all these methods, and we can directly use them. I think that is a very smart and pragmatic, simple approach. So now let's do some coding here. Okay, so I want two constructors, this one, and the default constructor also. Let's make this private for Panache only. So let's add a comment so that the next developer doesn't get this wrong. Okay, so you, this you probably know from default JPA. And now let's have some fun. Let's refactor that. Okay. So. Now let's make use of this. So first of all, a method to retrieve all the developers. Again, that is not production-ready code. In production, you would, of course, not retrieve all the developers with one method, but we're just playing here. And this will be JSON. And this will be running on the developer's path. Okay. And now I want to retrieve all the developers. So I say return developer dot list all. And of course we will retrieve a list of, no, this is wrong. Uh, developer, okay, better. And now I also want a method to, uh, so we can add a developer. Okay, so we will say new developer. And for this I need a pass, so let me copy this one here. Yeah. Okay. So let's make this new, and let's put here the name, right? So now this will return just one developer. Okay. 
and we need a pass param name string name okay and now we'll just create a new developer 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 equals to developer of name so we're using the static factory method here and now that we created it of course we also have to persist it okay and we'll return the developer that we just created okay so now this is looking good i guess now let's also create a rest client Let's call this hello client. Okay. This is actually an interface. Register rest client. Okay. And now I need a method string hello. Because this is supposed to call my native um, container that is running later on. So we'll say pass. Let's say hello. And this again will be get. And produces again is media type dot text plane. Okay. So let's check also the application properties. So we have this on port 8081. The test port I've set, I mean, even though we, we don't have tests, if we would have tests, so they would not interfere each other. And here we will configure uh, the connection to our remote uh, uh, application, okay? Running on port 8080. So now let's go to the resource. And now we will remove this one here. And we will use the remote client instead. So. Let's say private, hello client, hello client. And let's say return hello client dot hello. And let's comment this out. OK. So now let me start my native application again. And let's see again how fast this is. So you see this is only five milliseconds. Let's see if this is starting again. Localhost, hello. Yes, here it is. And now we want to connect against that. So let's open a different tab. OK, so Maven package. OK. So let's start this. Java jar. Oh, we're not. Java minus jar. Main. No. OK. OK, normally this is like much, much faster. St my computer is still sleeping. <laughs> yeah. So. In the meantime, I can also show you something else, which is, let's look ac actually at the RSS memory. PSS, RSS, and grab for Quarkus. So you see here, this just uses 24 megabytes in RAM. So this is you know, a native executable entire application server with only 24 megabytes of RAM. I think that's pretty cool, even though my computer is still sleeping. Ah, the address is already in use, but I have configured it. 
This I do not understand. This is on port 8080. And this is on port 8081. Okay. So this is interesting. So what I also want to show you is the fallback implementation, right? So we can add here a fallback, which we could really need. <laughs> Fallback method equals to on fallback. Private string on fallback. Okay. All our J on the beach. Okay, so that when the remote application is not running, that we can have the fallback. And now let's figure out why this is running on the same port. I'm still running IntelliJ. Yes, you're right. OK, thanks. OK. OK, now this worked. So finally, this was as fast as I would expect, right? Bam, and it's there. So let's now see. Internal server error. Seems like I'm having fun today. Now, oh, yeah, sure. So, of course, this one I know. It's easy. We need to inject my client. And we have to say this is my REST client. OK. So let's do this again. Now, of course, that's the problem that I wanted to show you. Let's let you see if the, if the developer mode is then working. That now we do have to do this, compile this again. Obviously, this is annoying. And this, with the Quarkus plugin, we want to prevent. So compile. Now we can have some Twitter. OK, done. So we go to the target folder. OK. And it's there in 1.4 seconds. OK. So hello. And now let's see. See, we're calling here this one. So now let's see what happens if I now stop my server. What was this actually running here? OK, Quark is stopped in one millisecond. Now let's reload that. And all our J on the beach, right? So this is my fallback. And now the one last thing that I wish I could show you, let's try if this is going to work, is the developer mode, which means we could change this just on the fly, right? But I mean, this is already pretty cool that like, we see how fast. I mean, this is actually the main point. Quark is here is starting within. So we stop this. Let's start it again. Five milliseconds, right? So this, I don't know, has anyone ever seen that before with Java and Java applications starting in five milliseconds? No one? Yeah, that was also quite new for me. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Now, I guess the time is already pretty uh, far, so we still have some questions. Sorry that I was not able to show you the developer mode. Let's, let's leave this here. OK, so thanks.
So now if you have questions, just let me know. Anyone questions? Yeah, yeah, there are. There are. Still there are. sleeping? There are. One moment. OK, so let's have a look at the questions that have been asked. So there are four. I think we have time for those four questions. Um, so the first question from the audience. Do we have to use Quarker specific libraries to get the performance boost? Or you develop them additionally, but their usage is, is optimal? and normal libraries can be optimized into an optimized jar as well. So, it's a long question. <laughs> okay, good, good question. Thank you for this one. So, here, first of all, um, it depends. Uh, these extensions, maybe I, I show them again. Mm. Quark is list extensions. Uh, Quark is list extensions here. Okay, so these extensions, yes, they are specifically for Quarkus. Um, you will need them if you want to create a Graal uh, native executable with Graal, right? Because at least with with Quarkus, right? So that this gets super super fast. But if you're just using the JVM, you can also uh, uh, go without that. So um, you, you will need the extensions if you, if you want to use Quarkus with the Graal VM. And uh, the performance boost, this one I explained in the beginning, because you know this is the two-step process. Let me also show this again. Uh, so on the first step here, our plugin creates here um, the optimized jar. And this already gives us a performance boost, right? Because, as I said, the initial part that we create, um, that the server has to parse all the files, the XML files, this will take a while. And this is already done for you. So this is, has nothing to do with the extensions, right? So this will also work without the extensions. It's only for the second part for Graal VM. And as I said, it, it comes with restrictions, right? So uh, there, more and more extensions are added because this is like really so boom for, for the whole Java ecosystem. Um, and if you are running, like if you are the maintainer of some framework, yes, please, you're invited to help us to write more extensions here. Yeah, so I hope this answers the question. Okay. Uh, second question. I think you spoke a little bit about it at the beginning, but um, the question is, do you support Java 11? Um, as, I mean, Quarkus is still in development. At, uh, I think just yesterday or, or two days before, um, Quarkus uh, 0.15 was coming out. So the zero will get you an idea that it's, it's not production ready. And the question of whether we support uh, Java 11 or not, I mean, that's mainly dependent on Graal VM, right? Because um, so far, to my knowledge, but this might have already been changed, right? My last, my last information is that it's uh, running with Java 8. From our perspective, we could also uh, use Java 11. It's just that we're waiting that GraalVM will support that, and as soon as this is happening, it, it might have already, uh, there's just has been a new version, so this might already have happened. And as soon as this has happened, we will switch over to Java 11 also. Okay. So I think we have time for one last question. Um, it's an interesting question. It might be maybe a bit difficult to, uh, to answer, but... <laughs> um, the, qu the question is, how close to Go slash Node.js does Quarkus implementation bring us in terms of speed, maintenance, memory cost, uh, and okay. cost in terms of cloud deployment resources? That's an interesting question. That's a nice and interesting question, yes. So for this, maybe let's take this slide here. So, I mean, I cannot like 100% uh, give you the, the answer here because this is very dependent on the specific application, right? I can tell you we are getting like really, really close. We might in some cases even be faster and smaller and in other cases maybe be a bit bigger and a bit slower. But I think in, in the area that we're talking about, this is like first time that we ever saw this with Java and Java, I mean, has lots of other advantages and so, 
in the case where this will be faster even like than Go or Node, I mean, there is no reason why we would want to use Go or Node. In the other cases where it's like 20% maybe slower, I don't know. Now you have to decide like what is important for you. So I would say at least it's like really comparable, right? And it's changing. Like we're still at version 0 0.15, and, and GraalVM is also improving a lot. So there we also obviously depending on GraalVM. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. So can I have a big applause for Market Bill? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great honor. So thank you so much for coming uh, at this early hour. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. It was very, very interesting. Um, we have a, a coffee break now, so I hope to see you soon after the break. Thanks very much. Thank you.